I use photo editing apps literally every day and even sometimes it's easier to do it on my phone rather than on a computer because some of the tools are just really simple and easy to use. So I'm gonna share five that I've used before and think are just pretty good in terms of what they give us. So let's start with the first one, which is Snapseed, which is now owned by Google. And this is what I would say is a fundamental uh, imaging app. You're not gonna get too many bells and whistles with this one, but it is really simple, easy to use, and everything is really done with a slider. So you can just put your finger anywhere on the screen, move it left and right, and it will change how the image looks. So there are some simple tools on this one and you can go straight into Tune Image and this is the name that they give to the functions that change the way the image looks. So you can change the brightness, the contrast, the exposure, even the saturation and the warmth which is changing the uh, light temperature. Maybe you want it to look a bit warmer or cooler. Everything can be done in Tune Image. You can also crop the image in and out of course. Every editor will let you do this. And there are some styles on Snapseed. Definitely not the biggest selection. I think some other apps maybe have a bigger selection of styles and uh, presets that you can use straight away, but there are some on this one and you might wanna check them out. What's really good about Snapseed though is that they have this brush and with the brush, you can actually change the image. So let's say you wanna change the exposure or the contrast in an image. Maybe the highlights are too bright, you wanna bring them down. Well, actually with a brush, you can selectively change the exposure or the saturation or the color warmth just where you place the brush, which means you can be really selective about your edits. Usually with apps, you can only change the whole image. So if you want to make it a little bit darker, then all of the image gets darker or brighter. You can change uh, highlights and shadows separately in a lot of apps, but this one is really good in a way that you can just touch the screen and change anything you want using that brush really selectively. Next, we have the Adobe suite of apps. And actually, Adobe make a great set of free applications for editing pretty much anything. So you should go and check them all out because you can sign up for an Adobe uh, Cloud account. You don't actually have to pay a subscription for the free apps that they give you. There are subscriptions too that you can use that give you access to a lot more features, but the free features are really good as well. So for me, Photoshop and Lightroom are the easiest to use and the ones that I use most often. So with Photoshop, basically this has everything in there. So it's really good at changing the contrast ratios and just the styles of your photo. They have a ton of preset styles, otherwise known as LUTs or lookup tables that can be put on top of your image and completely change the look and feel of it. There's a lot more on Photoshop, for example, than on Snapseed. You can put these overlays on, as they call them. It changes the style completely. You can also choose how much of that overlay you want. So if it's a bit strong in terms of how it changes your image, you can just turn it down a little bit until it looks better. You can also automatically change it. There's like an auto brush feature that you can press and it will scan your image and then change it a little bit based on how it thinks it should look like. And you can change that as you want as well if you don't think it's very good. You can also go in and edit everything yourself individually. Again, it uses a slider system, so choose what you want to change, for example, the contrast or the colors, and then just change it with the slider bar. It's super easy and you can just make your images pop and just look a little bit better like they were taken on a proper camera using Photoshop. Lightroom is more or less the same as Photoshop. Actually, they do have a lot of overlap and only really when you move up to the paid version do you get a lot more features in Lightroom. But Lightroom does pretty much the same thing. You can just change the way that the image looks. You can change the contrast and the difference between the shadows and the highlights. There aren't as many presets on Lightroom. It really is more of uh, an app for you to go in and change it yourself. There are some presets that you can use, but I would say that Photoshop and Lightroom really do overlap in terms of the free versions. So you might wanna give both of them a try, see which one suits you more, but both of them are really good tools from Adobe. I've put Canva on the list and this is a kind of different one. It's not a photo editing tool as such, like uh, Photoshop or Snapseed. But what this does really is enable you to make an image from scratch. So you can actually choose the dimensions of the image first. So if you want to make a thumbnail, you can choose 
the YouTube thumbnail size and then start from there. And then what you can do is add images on top. So you can actually make really good collages like this. You can also make invitations if you wanna send something out. If you want to have maybe a banner or something, or you want to actually make a post on Instagram that isn't a photo, you wanna actually just edit something into it, then you can use Canva and it's a really good tool for that. Canva does have some tools as well to edit the look of images. So you, you can change the brightness and the exposure and everything like that. Definitely not as in depth as something like Photoshop, but it has its own unique strengths and it's something I use all the time. Airbrush is one that you might wanna have a look at. It's definitely unique in the features. This one really, it isn't about changing the colors or the exposure or the brightness like Photoshop would be. But Airbrush, as I guess you can tell by the name, is an Airbrush tool app. So if you want to edit images like they do in the magazines, change the shape of someone's face, change the color of the skin, change uh, the eyes, bigger, smaller, change the face shape, give someone a massive forehead. It can really get pretty grotesque, I must tell you. But all in all, a very powerful app to think that you can do all of this on your smartphone. You can really change the way someone looks to be completely unrecognizable. It's definitely a fun app. I'm sure it's useful for a lot of people, maybe not useful for others. But considering this is free, I think it's really powerful that you can pretty much change the way anybody looks completely on your smartphone. Pixar has made the list in this video. This is very different to the others in, I would say that you can add a lot of themes onto your photos, which might be something that you wanna do. So with this one, I think it's really good at adding text and also you can write over the image. So if you wanna just make a different kind of image, you can have like a, a trail, like a star trail. You can write things on the image and it has some really different looks. I feel it concentrates mostly on all of the drawing aspects. You can actually just start drawing on a completely new uh, image so you don't have to upload an image. So yeah, I guess the name itself, PixArt, sort of gives away what this app concentrates on. PixArt is more simple in terms of changing an image. So if you wanna upload an image and you really wanna fix it, maybe it's too bright or too dark and you really just wanna fix that first, you might wanna look at Snapseed and Photoshop. This one is about adding stuff onto photos, so themes and text and drawing and different types of stickers that you can use on here as well. There's lots of creative tools on this one. That's really what it concentrates on. So it might be worth having a look at if you just wanna create some different images, but that is five that I have used and do use quite often. I'd love to know your favorite five or what you think of these ones. As always, put them in the comments below. That is it for this one though. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.